Page 276, Home. Mom and I didn't talk much the whole walk home, and when we got to the front stoop, I automatically looked in the front bay window because I forgot for a second that Daisy wasn't going to be there like always, perched on the sofa with her front paws on the windowsill, waiting for us to come home. It made me kind of sad when we walked inside. As soon as we did, Mom dropped my duffel and wrapped her arms around me and kissed me on my head and on my face like she was breathing me in. It's okay, Mom. I'm fine, I said, smiling. She nodded and took my face in her hands. Her eyes were shiny. I know you are, she said. I missed you so much, Augie. I missed you too. I could tell she wanted to say a lot of things, but she was stopping herself. Are you hungry? She said. Starving. Can I have grilled cheese? Of course, she answered and immediately started to make the sandwich while I took my jacket off and sat down at the kitchen counter. Where's Mia? I asked. She's coming home with Dad today. Boy, did she miss you, Augie, Mom said. Yeah? She would have liked the nature reserve. You know what movie they played? The Sound of Music. You'll have to tell her that. So, do you want to hear about the bad part or the good part first? I asked after a few minutes, leaning my head on my hand. Whatever you want to talk about, she answered. Well, except for last night, I had an awesome time, I said. I mean, it was just awesome. That's why I'm so bummed. I feel like they ruined the whole trip for me. No, sweetie, don't let them do that to you. You were there for more than 48 hours, and that awful part lasted one hour. Don't let them take that away from you, okay? I know, I nodded. Did Mr. Tushman tell you about the hearing aids? Yes, he called us this morning. Was Dad mad because they're so expensive? Oh my gosh, of course not, Augie. He just wanted to know that you were all right. That's all that matters to us, and that you don't let those thugs ruin your trip. Sorry about my dogs. They're barking at something. I kind of laughed at the way she said the word thugs. What? she asked. Thugs, I teased her. That's kind of an old-fashioned word. Okay, jerks, morons, imbeciles, she said, flipping over the sandwich in the pan. Cretones, as my mother would have said. Whatever you want to call them. If I saw them on the street, I would. She shook her head. They were pretty big, Mom, I smiled. Seventh graders, I think. She shook her head. Seventh graders? Mr. Tushman didn't tell us that. Oh, my goodness. Did she tell you how Jack stood up for me? I said. And Amos was like, bam! He rammed right into the leader. They both crashed to the ground like in a real fight. It was pretty awesome. Amos' lip was bleeding and everything. He told us there was a fight, but she said, looking at me with her eyebrows raised, I'm just, I'm just so grateful you and Amos and Jack are fine. When I think about what could have happened, she trailed off flipping the grilled cheese again. My mom talk hoodie got totally shredded. Well, that can be replaced, she answered. She lifted the grilled cheese on a plate and put the plate in front of me on the counter. Milk or white grape juice? Chocolate milk, please? I started devouring the sandwich. Oh, can you do it that special way you make with the froth? How did you and Jack end up at the edge of the woods in the first place? She said, pouring milk into a tall glass. Jack had to go to the bathroom, I answered. My mouth was full. As I was talking, she spooned in the chocolate powder and started rolling a small whisk between her palms really fast. But there was a huge line and he didn't want to wait, so we went towards the woods to pee. She looked up at me while she was whisking. I know what she was thinking. We shouldn't have done that. The chocolate milk in the glass now had like a two-inch froth on the top. That looks good, Mom. Thanks. And then what happened, she said, putting the glass in front of me. I took a long drink of chocolate milk. Is it okay if I don't talk about it anymore right now? Oh, okay. 
I promise I'll tell you all about it later when Dad and Via come home. I'll tell you all every detail. I just don't want to have to tell the whole story over and over, you know? Absolutely. I finish my sandwich in two more bites and gulp down the chocolate milk. Wow, you practically inhaled that sandwich. Do you want another one? She said. I shook my head and wiped my mouth with the back of my hand. Mom, am I always going to have to worry about jerks like that? I asked. Like when I grow up, is it always going to be like this? She didn't answer right away, but took my plate and glass and put them in the sink and rinsed them with water. There are always going to be jerks in the world, Augie, she said, looking at me. But I really believe, and Daddy really believes, that there are more good people on this earth than bad people. And the good people watch out for each other and take care of each other, just like Jack was there for you, and Amos and those other kids. Oh yeah, Miles and Henry, I answered. They were awesome too. It's weird because... Miles and Henry haven't even really been very nice to me at all during this year. Sometimes people surprise us, she said, rubbing the top of my head. I guess. Want another glass of chocolate milk? No, I'm good, I said. Thanks, Mom. Actually, I'm kind of tired. I didn't sleep too good last night. You should take a nap. Thanks for leaving me baboo, by the way. You got my note? She smiled. I slept with him both nights. She was about to tell, say something else when her cell phone rang and she answered. She started beaming as she listened. Oh my goodness, really? What kind? She said excitedly. Yep, he's right here. He was about to take a nap. Want to say hi? Oh, oh, okay. See you in two minutes. She clicked off. That was Daddy, she said excitedly. He and V are just down the block. He's not at work, I said. He left early because he couldn't wait to see you, she said. So don't take a nap quite yet. Five seconds later, Dad and Via came through the door. I ran into Dad's arms and he picked me up and spun me around and kissed me. He didn't let me go for a full minute until I said, Dad, it's okay. And then it was Via's turn, and she kissed me all over like she used to do when I was little. It wasn't until she stopped that I noticed a big white cardboard box they had brought in with them. What is that? I said. Open it, said Dad, smiling, and he and Mom looked at each other like they knew a secret. Come on, Augie, said Via. I opened the box. Inside was the cutest little puppy I've ever seen in my life. It was black and furry with a little pointy little snout and bright black eyes and small ears that flopped down.